What is up, basketball fans? Welcome to the NBA Outlet, presented by Off the Glass. I'm your host, Nick Faye. With me, as always, Corey Waldron and regular guest of the show, Jack Manuel, co-host of the Brooklyn Buzz and JBT. What is up, fellas? How we doing? Wait, this isn't the Brooklyn Buzz, Nick. I thought we were talking about <laughs> Brooklyn Nets. Hey, no, man. Sorry, Jack. Maybe we, later we tonight. Make, we can make it the dual pod. We can yeah. Split it up. We have to do like a quadruple crossover podcast. We all host so many of them it's gonna be oh, when, we four- get, well, no, when we get to the nets we introduce it as a brooklyn buzz pod <laughs> <laughs> mini pod so mini uh cory be ready for an extra half an hour that we weren't planning um Jack, <laughs> call up nick Busink, get him on here too for the wizards but uh but guys we're gonna talk otg team power rankings which uh cory and jack take care of we just did the player rankings on wednesday be sure to check that out they'll be up on the website this weekend as well you know our staff voted on these over 20 votes from different guys you know these did come in uh, about a week ago so some of them might be a little bit late but we're gonna break it down go three each team and starting from the bottom as drake would say we're going with number 30 the cleveland cavaliers what are your thoughts on the Cavs at 30 i mean i think that the otg staff are pretty spot on you know it was generally near unanimous that they were the, the number 30 team and you know i'm working on a piece for otgbasketball.com for the uh o triple t series about the fact that the Cavs might be the worst franchise in the nba right now and uh, this ranking reflects that, and I might have to add a little snippet, a little hyperlink to it to back up my point. I'm done watching the Cavs this year. <laughs> that that that's how I feel about these rank. This ranking, um, they are 30th. I don't need to watch, especially with no Kevin Love. Definitely don't need to watch. Um, yep, that, that's that's about it for me. Duke, yeah, Duke a- are gonna beat him, guys. Duke are gonna beat him. Come on, yeah, let's okay, real. Paul Pierce. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I agree with you guys. Number 30 is fine for the Cavs, obviously, without K-Love. There's been a lot of problems. I know going to the season, a lot of us weren't very high in them. But moving on to number 29, the Atlanta Hawks. What are your thoughts thoughts at the Hawks at 29? I actually like the Atlanta Hawks. Like, I watching them, you know, Corey was mentioning he wouldn't watch the Cavs. I know Corey is a notorious Hawks hater. Uh, <laughs> insert any Trey Young's um, anti-standism he has had over the years or over the past year or so, but I really like watching him play. He's a, a really entertaining player. You know, him, Doncic, you know, I'll probably have them as my top two rookies to watch. Jaron Jackson, Jackson Jr. is quite fun as well when we get to the Grizzlies. But the Hawks play some fun, you know, speedy basketball. Their win against the uh, the Heat the other day was quite nice. You know, Vince Carter's still doing windmill dunks. You know, what's not to like? Okay. So I've been pretty... <laughs> open about how wrong it was about Trey Young, I think, right? <laughs> I'm going to on it in your face, bro. So, uh, I was wrong. They're a lot better. They're more enjoyable. Um, Trey Young is, he looks good. Uh, he's put every single doubt I had um, to rest, and he looks very good so far. A little bit, to me, turnover still, I'll say that, but he's been very effective, and this team is a fun team to watch. Um, I like Prince. I like Ken Bazemore, even though he's really streaky. Vince Carter's fun still. Uh, th- this has been a this has been a solid team, so I think they're actually too low on these rankings. Yeah, Kevin Herter's been pretty good too. He's had some nice moments. I could see him having a nice future with them. But I agree. I think that twenty nine actually might be a little low. Would you guys move them up a few spots? Uh, yeah, I probably would. I mean, we have the when we get to our next couple of the Bulls and the Knicks. Uh, I was watching their game the other night. And <laughs> seriously, if it if it wasn't you know for the O T G basketball account. Nick, I don't know if I would have been on, mate, because it was it was an absolute struggle. You got to pay me more for that sort of stuff because that was <laughs> one of the worst games I've watched, you know, in person for a while. And I only get a couple of days a week where I can watch live basketball, and the fact that I had to watch that was um was saying something. But at least you know Zach Levine and Mitch Robinson. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out something when we get to those two teams. Yeah, I agree. I think you probably could boost the Hawks up maybe a spot or two, maybe up to like 26 at the highest. But number 28, what you just mentioned, Chicago Bulls. What are your thoughts on the Bulls so far? 28, a fair ranking? I mean, defense is like not in their vocabulary at all. It's um, optional. It's literally optional. Like it's like guacamole at Chipotle. Because <laughs> they're just like not playing it at all. I, I think Jabari Parker has been crucified and Probably unfairly so because there's a lot of bad defenders and it's not just him. He is horrible. So, I mean, he does deserve to get some of that sort of credit in that sense. But they don't, at times, they play some dazzling basketball. Zach Levine is on an absolute tear and proving all those naysayers wrong, including probably some of us at OTG about, you know, the contract that he signed because he looks really good. Um, His his athleticism is still there. His bounce is still there. He's got a, a great shot on him. But outside of him and Wendell Carter Jr., there aren't many highlights. Um, bring back Larry as soon as we can because I think that can add a, another dimension that will make at least the Chicago Bulls team a little more watchable, similar to the Hawks. 
Yeah, the Bulls are uh, absolutely dreadful to watch on the defensive end of the floor. I mean, 92 <laughs> points and a half. 92 <laughs> points and a half. I, I get it's the Ugh. Warriors. And Clay they goes off for the record, too. They handed him the record. Oh, they didn't even defend him. so at the easy. Uh, did you guys see the the uh, video of Jabari Parker with somebody going to the rim and he's just standing there like flat footed, like, <laughs> like pausing like during the headlights? It's, it's help defense, um, bro. Come on. Their defense is exactly why they're exactly where they should be at twenty eight. Yeah. Yeah, I think you know it's funny going to the season. A lot of people were talking possible playoffs, and now it looks clear like they need to tank. Uh, one of what? our new writers, Alec, just wrote something up about uh, this team. <laughs> But um, moving on from the Bulls, you know, we don't need to give them too much love. At number 27, the New York Knicks. Thoughts on the Knicks? I mean, the only thing that's, you know, probably storyline worth watching with the New York Knicks right now is the the health of Porzingis. You know, he posted that Instagram video the other day of him making some sprints. So, you know, he's making some progress. You know, David Fisdell came out. Um, obviously, he's had that, that shaky relationship with Marcus Gasol in the past. So he doesn't want to continue that sort of trend with his star franchise player. Um, I think the most watchable thing about the Knicks is, can they get Zion? Because I think if we have a Paul Zingas at full health, a Zion Williamson in New York, then New York might be one of the most fan, fun franchises in the NBA because um, I'm hopefully going to move to New York one day and I might have to, I'm not going to split allegiances between uh, the Nets and the Knicks, but I'll certainly be keeping an eye on them. Yeah, I definitely would have disowned you if you said that you were. But, uh, <laughs> well, I was wondering where that was going for a second. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> um... I mean, the Knicks have been solid without Przingis. This is kind of what we expected from them. I don't think we really expected Tim Hardaway Jr. to be playing this well. You know, 24 points per game, um, 37% from three. He's been he's been a leader, uh, which I just haven't seen from Tim Hardaway Jr. Uh, David Fisdale effect. I think Kevin Knox has been solid in the few games we saw him. Unfortunately, he got hurt. Um, I think this ranking is pretty fair for what this team is. Yeah, you got to give Fisdale a lot of credit in New York, the Knicks are playing super hard, like you guys mentioned. And then some of the guys are stepping up. You know, Frank's been solid. You know, Jack mentioned Mitchell Robinson. I think there's just a couple different guys. Noah vonley has been solid for them. They're getting value out of guys that maybe were forgotten about in the NBA. So, so far, it's been a good season for what they're looking at. Also, another OTG writer, Mike Ryan, just wrote, wrote something. The Knicks are winning by losing. So this is kind of what they want to do. And like Jack said, maybe they can get Zion. Maybe they can sign a big free agent as well. So I think the Knicks are okay where they're at. Number 26. I want to say this. I want to say this. I want to say they're a good, bad team. Yeah, they play hard. And I'll also give you a quick shout-out before we move on to the next team, to Alonzo Trio. He's had an absolutely insane, insane, insane season. I so so. Um, He's a really entertaining player. And, you know, I love these. Mean crossover. Yeah, mean crossover. He's, he's done that um, to our Nets. And him and Alfonso McKinney are two of the um, really nice fairy tale stories of this NBA season. Yeah, we'll talk about McKinney later, but his story is wild. Uh, number 26, the Phoenix Suns. They're coming off uh, a really harsh loss last night where they're blowing out the Celtics, and all of a sudden the Celtics came back in the fourth and they crushed them in overtime. Thoughts to them at 26? Um, yeah, I mean, the Phoenix Suns, they have all these pieces. You know, I really like Mikhail Bridges. Devin Booker is, you know, growing every day. DeAndre Ayton is an offensive beast, but, you know, his defense leaves a lot to be desired, as does the teams as a whole. But when you have guys like, you know, Trevor Ariza out there, you expect them to play some semblance of defense. But, you know, we're talking about the Bulls in terms of defense. But watching the – I was able to watch, you know, OT in the fourth quarter last night. It seemed that they just crumbled. And when it comes to – you know, Igor Kokoshkov's offensive system, he likes to move the ball. He has that very sort of European, egalitarian style of offense. But in that fourth quarter, it was just, you know, Devin Booker iso ball. And when you have a defensive team with the likes of, you know, Jalen Brown and, you know, all these sort of guys out there um, for the Boston Celtics, who are quite easily one of the best defensive teams or the best offensive team in the NBA right now, you can't do that. You have to be uh, a little more intelligent with how you're sort of, you know, um, getting buckets. But, you know, Phoenix, uh, they're, they're experiencing some issues. You know, they're on the rise, but um, I'm glad that we got to get them at this stage because I think that they will only get better as the season progresses. Yeah, I mean, Phoenix, DeAndre Ayton and Devin Booker are definitely two guys you can build around. Uh, I think that's been pretty much established. Devin Booker's been electric. Uh, TJ Warren has been very impressive. Um, he's gotten better this year. He's just a more efficient uh, small ball four. And, but really, everybody else on this team, I mean, even that game against Boston last night, you know, all those guys had to play 40-plus minutes. The bench gave them, I think, like 12 points or 10 points. Um, 
So it's they got some starters, but the fact of the matter is they don't have anyone else to back those guys up, so they're always going to be a bottom-level team. Yeah, do you guys think they're fairly ranked here, or they could even be a few spots lower? Um, I think they're probably – they have that Devin Booker effect that I think probably elevates them above the likes of the Knicks, the Bulls, and the Hawks. So I think this is fair. I rank them around this sort of range as well. Um, so I think that they're fairly ranked, but with the way they're playing, you, know, you could easily put them down a spot or two. Yeah, I would have them either 29 or 28. I think the Hawks are better than them, and I'd probably – I might even the Bulls would be a conversation, but I think they could probably be a couple spots lower. Yeah, I think right now you can make the argument for them to be lower, but like Jack mentioned, I think going forward they hopefully should improve. They have a lot of young players, and maybe Drew will help them. Going on to number twenty-five, Orlando Magic. What are your thoughts on Magic so far? Yeah, the Magic have been they've had their moments. Aaron Gordon showed some flashes. Mo Bamba shown some flashes. Jonathan Isaac's health has been. You know, uh, one of the more depressing storylines. You know, I really wanted that to see him healthy at a nice summer league, and he's got some, you know, really nice intangibility. Just his game, it just screams potential. Um, they need a point guard in the most desperate way. Nikola Vucevic continues to just put up numbers. Him, Jonas Valanciunas, Ines Cantor, these sort of guys just know how to put up buckets. They're just offensive beasts. And the fact that he can stretch the floor a little bit, I think that he's a nice little trade chip. Evan Fournier continues to do some nice things. But, yeah, um, under Steve Clifford, his first season there, they've been okay. But um, they're sort of like one of those teams that, you know, automatically goes under the radar unless they make some sort of big move or have some sort of upset win. They're the 29th ranked team in offensive rating. No surprise. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, they're hard to watch at times. It was cool seeing Aaron Gordon do the, the mailman dunk the other night. Yeah, that was pretty- awesome. Yeah, that it was, was off dope. a hoop, right? Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, it was. Yeah, was it, was. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, it was. It's, that's nuts. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And he's he's super athletic. He's a freak. Uh, so you get bright moments like that, uh, but they're just not a good basketball team. And the point guard is really the issue, I think. Not having a guy who can really create for others and, and do some playmaking, it hurt them. Even if they had gotten a guy like Tony Parker, I think it would have made a huge difference for their offense. But, you know, this team could probably also be a couple spots lower maybe. Yeah, definitely some struggles in Orlando. Like you said, that point guard position is something to keep an eye on. And it feels like they've already had a few injuries over there. They had, I think, a nice win against Boston. But other than that, they've been pretty inconsistent. I was watching them play against Detroit the other night, and they had a nice 20-point lead. Next thing you knew, that was over, and Detroit won the game. So I think Orlando, where they're at, or like Corey said, maybe a few spots lower. Moving on to our next team, twenty four ranked, uh, 24th, the Sacramento Kings. And I think we'd all agree this is probably too low for them the way they played so far this season. Yeah, a lot can happen in a couple of days in basketball. That's why, you know, uh, let alone a week. So these rankings might seem like you were mentioning at the top, Nick, a, a little bit askew. But, you know, at the time, the Kings were, uh, you know, playing Kings-style basketball. But now they got guys like De'Aaron Fox, who's playing absolutely scintillating basketball, paired up with a guy like Willie Cauley-Stein, Buddy Hill. You know, he's almost redeeming his worth in that DeMarcus Cousins trade to an extent. They've still got, you know, their young sophomore um, Bogdanovich to come back soon. There's just so many young, intriguing pieces, you know, and they're playing a, this speedy, pacey style of basketball that fits their system. And, and a lot of credit goes to Dave Yeager because I, I haven't been a big fan of his, but, you know, he's instilling a system that benefits his players the most, and you can't hate. Um, they're not going to win. The, obviously, their pick is they want to win as much as possible because their pick uh, is going to be going Boston's way, I believe, uh, in the draft. But, you know, at this stage, they're gonna, they could be – you know, around that sort of 30 win mark, which I think is, you know, definitely a couple wins more than most of us expected. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're the number one team in pace. Uh, as you as you mentioned, this team is really fun to watch. I didn't expect it. De'Aaron Fox really took a jump this year. He kind of reminds me of John Wall in a sense. Yeah. Uh, he, he just plays, I mean, he just plays all out. Um, the triple-double the other night. Buddy Heald, he took a step. He's... He's a threat. He's a threat offensively. He he's, he can score now. Willie Cauley Stein took a jump. This team is there are all these rookies, these young guys they had. They actually really just all took a step forward. And we haven't even really seen a Bogdanovich yet who's been hurt. Yeah, it's really interesting. It's like uh, you kind of want to almost do some research in like what assistant coaches they signed or something because player development took a major jump this season. Like you guys said, they've been fun to watch. Like they're exciting. They have some really nice young players that are stepping up. How many spots would you guys move them up right now? They're at 24. Give me a range of where you think they should be. 
Uh, early 20s. I think that they're, I mean, 21, maybe even knocking on the door of the 20. Um, I think that they're, in terms of the form right now, they've been up and down still. They're not going to, they're going to get some wins that they shouldn't. And they're also going to get some, you know, losing games that they should. That's the, um, that's just how a young team develops. But also, uh, I think Marvin Backley's been a little bit better than I expected. I really like his athleticism. Um, but I still think that with their big situation, because Willie Cauley Stein has been so good, Marvin Bagley looks best at the five for me, but I'm not, not sure how that sort of fits going forward. But they've at least got the talent there. And like you said, Nick, their development has been uh, something to marvel at. Yeah, I'd probably knock them up one or two spots. Uh, probably two. Th- I mean, knock on the door 20. I, I, th- I agree with you, on Jack, you, Jack, on that. Um, as everything we just mentioned, they, they've been really fun to watch. This is a solid team. They've gotten better. Yeah, I agree with you guys. I think right around that 20 mark is definitely, you know, we're going to obviously keep an eye on how they play moving forward. At number 23, Jack, our Brooklyn Nets. Thoughts of them at this spot? Uh, insert Brooklyn buzz plug. Uh, <laughs> but I think that our Nets are around this range. Where did I have them? I think I had them at exactly 23 as well when I did my votes. I think over the past couple of games and even in some of the close games we've had with some of the better contenders like Pelicans and the Warriors, we've proven that we are a top 20 sort of team, uh, but we need to put and prove that in stretches. Our defense has shown some strides. Our offense is up and down, but our three-point shooting is one of the best in the NBA. And Joe Harris, I believe, is still number one in that area. You know, Carol Silverta has turned himself into an absolute stud. Uh, D'Angelo Russell is showing signs. Uh, and, and, you know, additions like Ed Davis and Shabazz Napier I'm making us a very deep team and one that's, you know, could knock on the door of the playoffs soon enough. And, you know, who knows, uh, we could knock on, you know, maybe the, the 20 spot, the 18 spot, you know, in the coming weeks when we uh, do this again. Yeah, I, I think the Nets have been pretty impressive the start because of guys like Karis LeVert, Jared Allen. Um, they still don't have Damari Carroll back. Hopefully he, tonight. He, is that tonight? Sweet. Yeah. Um, they're still putting things together. I mean, Joe Harris has been an improvement. The struggles of Alan Crabb have hurt, I think, a decently a decent amount. And then Delos, um, I don't know, whatever's been going on in that situation, you know, him not playing late in games and him kind of struggling offensively. Uh, but you know, I had him at twenty three as well. Uh, they've been fun to watch. They're a solid team. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you guys said. I'd probably boost them up a couple spots. I think they're better than teams that we have ahead of them, like the Mavericks and the Wizards, as at least as of right now. And like you said, Jack and Corey, you know, Karis Avert stepped up. Jared Allen's been nice. Joe Harris has been lighting it up. Also, Spencer Dinwiddie's been really solid as well. And like you mentioned, the new additions like Ed Davis and Shabazz have been a pleasant surprise. Moving on to 22, Dallas Mavericks. Who you guys got? What do you got with that? Uh, yeah, the Mavericks, I think, are one of the teams that when we did this, we automatically seemed a little bit higher on because you look at the, the makeup of their roster. DeAndre Jordan, Wesley Matthews, Harrison Barnes, Luka Doncic, and Dennis Smith Jr. That's a nice team. But the way that they've meshed so far has been a questionable, to say the least. You know, Luka Doncic has been nice. Um, Corey was mentioning, you know, turnovers earlier about, I can't remember which player. Uh, I'll try Young. Um, but that's just um, the, the way with rookies. But I think he still exceeded or at, is at expectations for a lot of sort of uh, NBA media type. But I think he's been great. For me, one of the standouts is just the chemistry within the team in towards Luca, you know, are these guys, are guys like DeAndre Jordan, Wesley Matthews, guys who have, you know, NBA stores, are they vibing with Luca Doncic right now? Because it seems like, you know, with DeAndre Jordan elbowing, you know, Luca in the head, trying to get a just a defensive rebound. One of the biggest lowlights of the season for me, for this team, uh, it just seems like that there's a, a chemistry issue. And we know how much chemistry on and off the court can affect, you know, um, production on it as well. Yeah, I mean, DeAndre Jordan, though, he's having a career year, no? Yeah, his free throw shooting is insane. Insane. Yeah, 84%, 13 points, 15 rebounds, 63%. I mean, he's definitely benefited from playing with guys like like Luka. Um, I mean, they're just really not that good of a team. Obviously, Harrison Barnes has only played in seven games. He's just getting back. I mean, he hasn't looked impressive, though. You know, 36% from the field. Um, they're just kind of, you know, they're a mess. The worldly math, he gets a lot of shit, but – uh. He's a he's a solid player. They're just kind of, I don't know. You just you have to just watch Dennis Smith and Luka Doncic and just kind of zone out the other guys because none of them will probably be there for very long. Yeah, I think what Jack said, chemistry wise, they don't really feel like a team. 
Like they just don't feel like they're really vibing well together and there's just not that chemistry on the court. So I, I think like some people were a little bit higher going in. I think this is another team we could probably drop a few spots as of right now. Now going on to number 21, the Washington Wizards, arguably has been one of the worst teams in the NBA so far this season. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't use the segue of chemistry there, Nick, because uh, I think that <laughs> if any other team sort of, you know, screams non-chemistry, it's this uh, Washington Wizards team. Um, I might have to text my boy, you know, Nick Music, co-host of JBT, just to see if he's all right, because uh, it's been a rough year for him, uh, to say the least, uh, following this Washington Wizards team. You know, Dwight Howard's butt um, is probably the storyline <laughs> of the season. Um, John Wall, will he or won't he be traded, apparently. Uh, it's unlikely with that trade kicker. Bradley Beal is still a good player, but it, does he have currency out there? Um, I, I listened to a podcast yesterday, which had Candace Buckner, who is you know a, a really fantastic writer for the Wizards beat. And she says she can't see anyone being traded right now because it just doesn't seem like the Washington way. It doesn't seem like what Ernie Grunfeld would do. Um, I think that they need to just to shake it up a little bit. You know, does Otto Porter go the way of, you know, Brooklyn or New Orleans or some other team? Is there, you know, another team that wants John Wall? Does he go to Miami? Um, they, they need to do something because John Wall's going to be earning a lot of money. Um, and he's not going to, it might be one of the worst contracts in the NBA. I know you guys hate that Kevin Love thing, but man, John Wall at 45 million, 48 million. Uh, in Chris, it's just, uh, it's a lot of money. And um, yeah, it, it's certainly not going to be, you know, matched by his value on and off the court. So this was his team is a mess. Um, and I think that's probably the best way to describe it. Yeah, I was really high on them going into the season. 13? You had them at 13 originally, Corey. Yeah, 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 I did. Um, <laughs> I I don't know. I, I thought I thought this would come together better when Dwight Howard came. I mean, it's only been three games with Howard back. But, I mean, Beal and Wall already calling guys out. A weekend saying people are selfish, playing for themselves. <clears throat> Austin Rivers, <clears throat> um, <laughs> and uh, it, it was just like, wow, like we're already here, like we're really already having locker room issues in October. <laughs> like this is what we're doing this year. Like, oh my, wow, <laughs> um, and it's obviously just gone on from there. And Otto Porter just doesn't get used. I, I don't. Why? Why are we? Pay, why are you paying that much money to just not use them? I don't get it. Wall and Beal have this like. They're just trying to like outdo one another. It feels like at times it's just such it's it's not good. Kelly Oubre is nice to watch though. That's probably and but he's been struggling this year, right? Um, yeah, Nick. Nick, Nick is, yeah, Nick is. He was on and off, right? He had a couple of hot games and then he had a couple of, like ice cold ones. Yeah, Nick has called him out ostensibly to me whenever we're hanging out. He's just like I, I, he infuriates me so much as a prospect because he has all the tangible qualities of being an awesome NBA player in terms of length, speed, shooting, defensive acumen, but he hasn't put it all together, like you guys said, very inconsistent. And wait, and can we just please take a moment? Bradley Beal compared Jeff Green to LeBron James. <laughs> oh, come on, man. Let's, <laughs> let's just move on. Let's move on. If that's yeah, not the that... Wizards season summed up in a quote, I don't know what it is. <laughs> I think you guys are right. You know, I, I feel bad for Nick, like you said, Jack. So I think the Wizards probably would move all the way down to the bottom five with the way they've yes. played this season so they're far. They're 28, 29, yeah. 28. They're, they're one of the top three worst teams. And, like, any time it looks like they're going to make a run, I was watching them a little bit against Dallas the other day where they were down 20. They made a run the third quarter. Then they come out in the fourth quarter and just look like trash again. So uh, it's just been struck, struck, uh, tough for them. Moving on to 20, though, OKC, you know, Oklahoma City Thunder. I think this is a team that probably is ascending a little bit with Westbrook coming back, and they look like they're starting to gel. I know he just got injured again, but I think they're starting to kind of find a rhythm. Yeah, they really are. Um, I think, again, this is one of the picks that I think is reflective of the rankings of, you know, a week or so ago uh, where they were struggling a little bit. And they've certainly got some form together. I think they're 7-0 and after starting 0-4. Um, and they're playing some awesome basketball. Paul George has been really nice. I think they're starting to sort of, you know, put the pieces back together. Stephen Adams is one of my favorite players. And I've, I've mentioned before, when I play pickup basketball, I want to play like Stephen Adams. Um, he passes the ball awesomely. Uh, is one of the most vicious screeners and is amazing in the pick and roll. One of my favorite players to watch in today's league. And um, I'm trying to get the man bun like Steven, but I don't think I can get the facial hair. He's just a, a wonderfully uh, gorgeous man. Now, Jack, this is a very important question. Yes, sir. Steven Adams or Al Horford? <laughs> Steven Adams or Al Horford? I'm go- I'm, I prefer the more masculine dude. Um, and Al Horford's eyes are very pretty, but I'm going... I'm going no, he's talking from on, on the court, not just looks, Jack. Oh, right. Okay. Well, let's go with both. 
off the court <laughs> in terms of in terms of their style, in terms of their swag, I'm going Stephen Adams. Um, have to shout out a fellow guy from the Southern Hemisphere. But um, oh man, it's got to be Al Horford. I mean, you, this is a running joke with um full access suits. I can't believe Thank it's God. actually. It's not a joke. It's, a, it's, ser- it's serious. There's a cult out there. There's a cult out there that thinks Stephen Adams is better than Al Horford. I think you got to bring Jack and I on next time this discussion comes up. Just hit me on the celly. Oh, I'm going to have to. I need reinforcements. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that was rough. Definitely Al Horford every day of the week. And no offense to Stephen Adams. He's a great player and probably a top 10 center. But Al Horford just does so many little things that, you know, probably the general NBA fan doesn't really notice as much. And uh, talking Thunder, I think this is a good spot for them. I think they're starting to gel. Paul George looked pretty good last night. You know, he's starting to find a little bit of rhythm. And obviously, hopefully Westbrook is healthy. I think the ankle injury looked a little bit worse than what it was. So hopefully he's back sooner than later. Yeah, so definitely a couple spots up. This is yeah. a little bit low. They, they're coming off two, I mean, they look good on paper wins. Uh, well, the Cav win without Westbrook, and then last night against the Rockets, who would just look like a mess. Uh, but still, I mean, Paul George looked the best he has all season, I think, last night, without Westbrook on the floor. Yep. No, moving on to number 19, the Memphis Grizzlies. This is another team that's kind of been slightly surprising. They've been kind of hot and cold, though, as well. Thoughts on the Grizz at number 19? Yeah, the Grizz had a nice win the other night against the Denver Nuggets. It's like they're almost like the grit and grind of old, that like they, but they shoot threes now. So, like, there's still, like, the old and the new. For me, Jaron Jackson Jr. has been awesome. I really like his style. We talked about Al Horford. Uh, that's probably his ceiling, and that's a fair ceiling to have, you know, a top sort of 20 player in the NBA. We had him very high on uh, mine and Corey's power rankings for OTG, um, in terms of Al Horford, that is. But, you know, Mike Conley, you know, criminally underrated ever since. Even now he's back, he's still playing some nice basketball. Marcus Gasol as well is playing some nice, very nice defensive basketball. And, you know, they've got just these pieces like Garrett Temple and Kyle Anderson, these sort of guys that can just go out there and get you a bucket. And um, the return of the Mac, uh, I, I know we talked about Orlando Magic earlier. They could probably use a guy like him right now because he's been um, – he's had some nice nights. He's shooting a yeah. pretty good percentage from three, I think, too, right? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's doing really well from the perimeter. I think yeah, he's had definitely you know, plus uh, double digits nights on at least three or four occasions. You know, this is a prime example of situation. Uh, yeah. I, Playing in Orlando is not the ideal situation for most guys. Uh, as a backup point guard to Connolly, he's been fantastic. Uh, he truly does fit in that back. Yeah, you know, that's really what he is. You know, he was forced to start in Orlando. He's really a backup point guard, and he can really excel in those limited minutes. Uh, and this team definitely has impressed. Uh, Garrett Temple, he had some really big explosive nights already offensively, shooting 47% from the field, 41% from three. I didn't expect that. As you mentioned, Jack, Jaron Jackson just had coming off a big night the other night. Uh, Casal and Connolly, eh, I mean, you can definitely tell they're on the back nine. Um, but but they're still very solid NBA players. This team has been impressive. Yeah, and then obviously, hopefully, Conley can kind of get into some type of rhythm moving forward. That'll help him out. Yeah. But uh, moving on to number 18. I think another team that's played pretty well going into the season that maybe we didn't necessarily expect. James Perego's done a great job. Thoughts at the Hornets at 18? Man, Kemba Walker is, is just a beast. Like, this guy is one of the best. I know you guys did the player power rankings. Make sure you guys are checking that one out as well because uh, Jeremy did an awesome job, as did these two. But he has been absolutely phenomenal this season. And, you know, you can make an argument that he's been the best Eastern Conference point guard. I know you guys uh, debated about him, about him plenty, but he's been fa- fantastic. Miles Bridges is out here. I don't know what what a rim ever did to Miles Bridges and his family, but he's like wanting to destroy them like they murdered his family. Because um, I, I hope we see him in the dunk contest. Of, dunk contest obviously, um, the All Star game will be in, in Charlotte this year, so I, I, I wouldn't I mean, wouldn't surprise me. Malik Monk's doing some nice things. Batum is playing a little bit better. Cody Zeller's playing okay. Um, they've got these nice young pieces, and like you mentioned, Nick. Uh, I think the, a new coaching change and Tony Parker as well. Uh, I think has played probably better than uh, a lot of us imagined. Yeah. Uh, specifically me, I didn't think Tony Parker was going to do as well. He he has in uh, Charlotte. He's been impressive. Corey, what are your thoughts on Charlotte? Uh, my friend, Ashley, is buying a Tony Parker jersey because he lives in North wow. Carolina. Wow. Yeah. He's been so impressed. He, uh, he was he's kind of like a Hornets fan, obviously. He lives down there. He was like, I'm pissed. Like, I don't want Tony Parker. And then all of a sudden, he texted me a couple days ago. He's like, he's like, I'm buying a Tony Parker jersey. I was like, <laughs> how fast things change. But they've Which been solid. Kem- Kemba Walker. In the conversation for MVP early, I mean, he has to be in the top five. He has to get some kind of recognition for this hot start, 28 points per game, uh, 5.9 assists, shooting 47-40 from the field. He's been incredible. Um, and this Hornets team's 
playing really well under new head coach Borrego. They they actually look like a, a tough team in the East. Yeah, no, big props to the Hornets. Something to keep an eye on the rest of the season. Moving on to number 17, the Timberwolves, obviously full of drama with Jimmy Butler. Thoughts on them so far? Man, the Timberwolves and the, and the Wizards, we could do an entire podcast about these two teams. But Jimmy Butler, will he play? Won't he play? You know, uh, it's gonna, it's just uh, and how it affects Carl Anthony Towns. He's on off numbers. Whenever Jimmy's off the floor, he turns into the cat of old, the cat that we know and love. Um, it, it sounds like I'm talking about my pet cat here. But <laughs> you, know, you, 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 guys, you guys know what I mean. Um, oh, I think that I, I'm. it's bewildering that he is still wearing a Timberwolves jersey. It, 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 it befuddles me. I can use all these different synonyms and adjectives, but it just, it, it, I, don't, I don't understand it. I'm, I'm without words uh, for why he is still on, in Minnesota. And uh, for as long as he is, it's going to be um, just one of those things where it's going to affect the team in a horribly erroneous way when it comes to guys like Wiggins and Towns. But um, Derek Rhodes has been doing nice things, though. I always you know, give his form with a, a little asterisk for all of his off-court issues. But he has been playing some nice basketball. So this team is 29th in defensive rating. So, again, Tom Thibodeau's defense not showing up on the court. And it they're four in Minnesota. <laughs> yeah. And they're 4-8. and eight. And because they're always in the news, it feels like they're better than 4-8. and eight. Yeah, like this is a bad team. You know, everyone's been hyping up Derrick Rose. You know, they're still four and eight. Uh, Derrick Rose has had a nice stretch. It's three games. Uh, I need to see this for an extended period of time before I say six man of the year, which I'm seeing on Twitter now. And I saw someone say on the Instagram MVP or in the conversation for MVP or in the conversation for top five point guard. And it's just like, let's let's relax. This isn't 2011 where we got a transition. Um, but, yeah, and the fact that Jimmy Butler is choosing when not to play and they're going to limit his minutes to 31 or whatever, it's just such a weird situation. Um, until that is handled, this team is going to be very dysfunctional. And probably yeah. they're, a little, they're a little bit too high. Probably. Yeah, honestly. they've been pretty bad. And like you said, the whole Jimmy Butler thing and then Derrick Rose, like, you know, he they actually have to win games and him play well. It's not about putting up stats and losing games, you know. So I think that matters. And like you guys said, probably a few spots down. Number 16, Miami Heat. And this feels like a spot we've seen the Heat at for like the last three years since LeBron left. Like they're just always in the middle of the pack. Yeah, I think the the biggest takeaway from the uh, Miami season so far is Josh Richardson's taking another step forward. And I think if yeah. you are Tom Thibodeau and Glenn Taylor and, and everyone there at the the uh, Timberwolves front office, you take that deal that includes him because right now he's almost exceeding the value that Jimmy Val- Jimmy Butler would provide you. Yes, Jimmy Butler is a top 15, top 20, top 10 player, maybe scraping uh, when he's at his best, but Josh Richardson is a very, very valuable two-way player in, in his own right. And I think on the contract that he's on as well, I think that that's um, more than beneficial for Minnesota. And it still surprised me that they haven't taken that uh, the Houston one doesn't surprise me, but yeah, the Miami Heat are doing some nice things. Ellington continues to produce. Uh, Dragic has been on and off, and that uh, near triple double night from Hassan Whiteside was just something you'd expect from Hassan. But um, I'm looking forward to see- to seeing him and Embiid battle again and seeing uh, what comes on Instagram and Snapchat after that. Yeah, um, Miami remains competitive right in the middle of the East. Uh, Josh Richardson has been really impressive, as you just mentioned, Jack. Uh, he's been phenomenal in 20 points per game, 41 from the field, 40, 40% from three. He would be like the perfect guy for Minnesota, too. It's not like yeah, he's a he big would. Go guy. He plays both sides of the ball just like Jimmy Butler does. His contract's friendly, only $10 million a year. Um, I don't know why that deal hasn't been, why it hasn't happened if that was on the table, personally. Uh, I think it was on the table and they pulled it. Pulled it, probably, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he's been really well. And, you know, uh, white side the other night, what the hell was that? <laughs> 29 points, 20 rebounds, nine blocks. I mean, uh, obviously some nights he's unplayable in the NBA, how it goes, but some nights he can do that. And it's really funny, you know, 15 rebounds per game. He's been fun. And, you know, it's ways last year. Yeah, it's, it's got to be, like, super frustrating as a Heat fan seeing Whiteside have a game like that, and then you see other games where he doesn't even scratch 10 points and he has, like, five rebounds and zero blocks. So it's like, you know, what Whiteside are we going to get consistently? So I think the Heat are probably around where they need to be. Number 15, the LA Lakers, and Corey made a great point about the Timberwolves. It felt like the Timberwolves were having a good season because how much they're in the news. The same thing about the Lakers. It feels like they're having a good season because they're always talked about, but really they haven't been super impressive at all. I actually think that they've been better than we've all sort of been, you know, downgrading them for. I, I, I don't understand the 
the wild speculation about Luke Walton. They are, like we've sort of mentioned in, in preseason power rankings, probably a fringe playoff team. And this is probably the range that you're looking at if you are a fringe playoff team. LeBron James has still been averaging like 27, 8, and 8, I believe. And, you know, he's been quiet by his own standards and just because of just the, the general impact that he's had. Uh, Brandon Ingram has not yet, you know, gotten back to his, you know, fully formed self or reached his potential. Cruz has been good. Lonzo Ball's had his moments. Uh, JaVale McGee is apparently a defensive player of the year candidate. I don't know what universe we're living in now, apparently, where that's the case. Um, but I think that the Lakers will continue to get things together. And I think that um, they're just one of the most fascinating stories in sports of like the last couple of years, because when you put in one of the best athletes in you know the, the history of sport into one of the biggest markets in the world, uh, it's going to be a highly combustible and highly entertaining situation and um, anything but La La Land. This is a good, bad team. Uh, I, think this, I think that's what this is. Uh, this is a bad, good team. I would argue the other way. Oh, uh, look. Yeah. Maybe. I'd, You're right. You, could, uh, you, you can we make it say the right in between. Yeah. It's, it's one of the, I mean, the fact of the matter is they, they just need more. Uh, I mean, they have solid pieces. Their offense, you know, their eighth in offensive rating, they scored a third most points per game. Uh, the defense just stops nobody. Uh, certain guys like McGee have been impressive. Kuzma has been solid. Ingram, you know, he, he's missed some games. Uh, Caldwell Pope, that guy's trash. I mean, <laughs> trash. <laughs> Who saw star or anything? I don't understand. He is trash. Unplayable. Which Pope? Play it. Uh, ridiculous. <laughs> but, um, you know, this team just hasn't – it just hasn't come together yet. And, yes, because it's LeBron James, they're on national TV every night. We definitely think this team is probably winning more games than they have been winning. Um, but they're right in the middle of the pack. Yeah, I think you guys have pretty much nailed it. Where they're just like – they're just not quite there yet, and they're right around that, like, fringe NBA uh, playoff team. And I think as the season progresses, they should probably improve and maybe Tyson Chandler will help them out a little bit in just in the locker room sense. But I think they could make a trade moving forward and try to boost up a couple spots. But it's going to be interesting to see how LeBron handles, you know, if they aren't a great team this season and they're actually fighting for a playoff spot. Talking the other L.A. team, number 14, Los Angeles Clippers. Which man, is we're gonna funny. Have... going to the season. You wouldn't expect, you know, the Clippers to be higher. Man, they're going to be so salty, Lakers fans. So uh, we need to like just CC the Lakers Twitter's account because and all the fan accounts, the SB Nation's account because um, they're not going to be happy about this. But I think right now it, it's fair enough. You know, I'm going to be talking about it on JBT with Nick about you know who is the better team in LA right now, and I think we're probably right. I'll definitely mention uh, the power ranking that we have here because um, the Clippers are playing some nice basketball. They're fun to watch. Uh, me and my one of my best mates back home uh, in Melbourne right now, we've nicknamed ourselves Bobby and Toby because we're just like a, a tall, lanky, wide dude who <laughs> likes to it's a bit goofy, likes to dance, and uh, my other dudes, are, uh, my friend, is a, a little bit cooler. Uh, and they're just like they're just so cool. And like the Clippers, you know, they're building something here. Uh, who, who knows what's going to happen uh, come the off season? But you know, they put themselves uh, in the running for guys for free agents of the likes of you know, uh, Kawhi Leonard uh, and such. But for me, they've just got a, a heap of guys and, you know, their um, they're rookie, which I'll, I'll let Corey say. Corey, what's his name? SGA? No. <laughs> <laughs> Shea Gilgis Alexander has been awesome. I think that um, the, the Cavs would be uh, kicking themselves that they didn't take him over Sexton. But um, he's been awesome. And he's, he's going to play in the NBA for a very, very long time. Shea Gilgis Alexander. Come on. There we go. <laughs> nah. yeah. I had, to, I, I had to hear you say it first. I had a little cheat. Uh, they've been good. They've been impressive. Um, Tobias Harris has looked solid. Uh, Boban has, like, the best PER in NBA history, I think I saw <laughs> uh, recently, ab ab above uh, Jordan and LeBron James. So he is the new GOAT. They've, <laughs> they've been solid. You know, Doc Rivers is getting a, a good amount out of these guys. And like you mentioned, they are a free agent destination this upcoming offseason. There's no question about it. The the talks about Kawhi and Kevin Durant, they're rear. They're rear? What was it? <laughs> they're real. Uh, um, they're an inter interesting place. I'm having trouble speaking for this team. Uh, they're going to be a team that a lot of guys can see these vets on and want to go to. So they've been really good. They're a good mid-level team, missing a star. Yeah. They're doing what they're supposed to do right now. Like you guys said, they're kind of uh, attracting free agents by the way they're playing now. Number 13, Detroit Pistons. 
Yeah, I think these guys are a little bit high. Uh, I think we probably bought in uh, a little bit too much to their early season form. Uh, Blake Griffin has still been very good. Uh, Andre Drummond still puts up 20-20 nights more than any other. Um, though I think a lot of, like him and you know Blake Griffin, it's almost like empty calories. It's like you're having you know, um, th- bad lollies because they just put up these numbers and it just doesn't seem to have an effect on winning basketball. Reggie Jackson has been okay. Smith's okay. Um, and Dwayne Casey's had, you know, a positive effect on this team, but I think that they're going to be what we expect them to be, uh, a fringe playoff team. And I think that by the next time we do this, they'll have dropped a couple of spots. Well, they are the 29th ranked team in three point percentage. Yes. Uh, that in today's NBA, that means you're losing, uh, you know, they're five and five. I think they're probably one or two spots too high. I have them at 15. Um, you know, Blake Griffin, as you mentioned, has been spectacular. Andre Drummond has looked solid. Reggie Jackson's healthy. Uh, but nobody else really can play basketball, it feels like, on this team. They really miss Luke Kennard. Ish Smith has played solid minutes, though. Uh, Reggie Bullock and stretches. It's, I mean, there's just not a lot there, aside from those guys they're paying a lot of money to. Yeah, and you mentioned it, Corey. Luke Kennard being hurt. Reggie Bullock's been in and out of the lineup. I think two of their best shooters not having them has definitely hurt that three-point shooting. Like Jack said, they probably could go down a spot or two. Talking number 12, Indiana Pacers, Corey's team. What thoughts on them? Um, I'm not sure why they're so low, but the Pacers have been playing some really nice basketball. They've taken uh, a mini step of sorts uh, from last season. You know, I'm sure Corey could speak at length about this team, but they've been awesome this season. There have been so many positive signs. Uh, Tyreek Evans has been up and down, but I still think he's fit. Uh, he's finding his fit uh, within this system. Uh, I think Nate McMillan uh, still needs to re- encourage his players to shoot more threes. Uh, I-, I think that his coaching can be uh, a-, a little bit up and down with his team as well. But Victor Oladipo is a stud. Sabonis is awesome. Turner um, is proving his value somewhat. Uh, but, but like no. Corey's mentioned... That- Don't well, be nice. I- Don't try and be nice. It's, it's for me. It's emblematic of like D'Angelo Russell. Like that. That's what it just reminds me of. Same so draft class, much. right? Yeah, and yeah. It, it reminds me of it so much. Like because you have this other guy who is really, really good, i.e., Karis Avert, and i.e., Demontis Savonis. But like you've already, put, you've got so much invested in this one guy already. Um, but the paces are really, really good. Their game against the Sixers the other night was awesome, and I would love to see you know a playoff series those two go up against each other, and we possibly could be seeing that in the future. Yeah, we have them at 12 on the rankings. I have them on 12, uh, at 12 for myself. Uh, they're, I mean, they're a good basketball team. They're fifth in defensive rating, 15th in offensive rating. Their offense is, um, it's a it's a grinded out offense, which is it's what Victor the Pacers. Oladipo. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's Victor Oladipo. And then when Victor Oladipo is not there, it's a bonus in the pick and roll. Uh, you know, those two guys are a big boatload of the offense. And some nights, Bogdan Mitch is hot and hits threes. Some nights, Miles Turner will... Uh, come out of nowhere and have a, a somewhat a, effective offensive night. But he's a guy who's averaging 4.8 rebounds, and that's why this team is outside the top 10 because um, they just don't have a number two, which was supposed to be Turner. He's shown glimpses for seven quarters. He looked really good, and then he went back to being uh, Miles Turner. It, it takes time. I'm I'm not selling that hard. Um, but they've been a, a solid, slightly above average team to start, and Victor Oladipo leads the way, of course. I'd probably bop them up into the top 10. I think I already have two teams in mind that I jumped them over the Rockets and the Sixers easily. I don't think they've been impressive. And Jack mentioned the Karis LeVert and D'Angelo Russell comparison. I would almost say it's more like D'Angelo and Spencer Dinwiddie because okay. you already have yeah. Dinwiddie yeah. like this guy that you already know what he can do. And Sabonis, you already know what he can do. He's proving it right now. But Turner has that potential, and he just hasn't showed it yet. And the same thing with D'Angelo. Like he's had, he's shown it in flashes, had really good stretches, especially like both of the rookie seasons. And now you're just like, oh, what's going on? But I think Pacers are a team will be fun to watch. And I've said this about the Pacers to Corey for like the last two years. Is there a team that you have to beat? They're not going to beat themselves. So I think, you know, that's a solid squad that definitely deserves to be in the top Wait. 10 next time we do the rankings. Um. Okay, I'm shot. I was not looking at the, the couple teams ahead of them. This is definitely a top 10 team. I was <laughs> underselling my boys. I apologize. Yeah, I was like, Corey, okay, you're pulling like a Jack. Jack always undersells like the Nets because he doesn't want to get too high I'm in definitely them. Am. <laughs> I always do. I know for a fact, when I, especially on the outlet, I try and undersell the Pacers because I don't want to be that, look at this Bill you like the look at this guy. Right? <laughs> Bill but uh, they're definitely a top 10 team. The Rockets, they're better than... The Sixers, it's close. I don't think they're, they're better than the Jazz at this point. Um, Pelicans haven't been playing that good. So you can move this team up, you know, two to three spots, maybe four. 
Yeah, I think so. I think that's pretty fair. Moving on to number 10, the San Antonio Spurs. Oh, actually, sorry, we skipped 11. 11, the Houston Rockets. Yeah, and I think I this think... is the team that we automatically could almost drop 10 spots if you really yeah. want to make an argument. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe 12. Yeah, I think um, we need the, the wisdom of Jeremy Freed here and his, <laughs> uh, Houston Rockets hot takes. Make sure you're checking him on OTG, uh, Parswell.com. He's been awesome. Um, but this Houston Rockets team is an absolute, you know, uh, d- d- dumpster fire. I'm trying to think of the appropriate analogy for it because they've just been so, 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 so cold. Um, James Harden, you know, I think he's, uh, I think it's been understated about his form this season, you know, a former MVP. Um, is he fit? Uh, did he come into the preseason fully fit? Was he, I, I don't know. Chris Paul, um, I heard on some podcasts someone say that in a year or two's time, his contract could be seen as one of the worst in the NBA because other than that Brooklyn Nets performance, which of course he had to do it against us. And same, same thing Carmelo, for Carmelo too. Like what? Exa- yeah, literally about to say the exact same thing. Other than that, uh, I don't know like what they've done this year that has been of worth. Um, I think injuries to Eric Gordon hasn't hurt. Has has hurt. Uh, Michael Carter Williams. Um, I'm sorry, Dylan, but I don't know why he's in the <laughs> NBA still. Um, but they've just got guys like Gary Clark Jr. playing. You know, very consistent long minutes. Uh, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. This Houston Rockets team. Uh, they missed their. They missed their chance. Unfortunately, I think it's going to be one that'll go down in history as a, a what if. Yeah, you know, a lot of people. Th- I mean, I myself felt like last year was their one chance. That was their – they had their window. Uh, the Chris Paul injury happens, and that's it. Uh, it just looks like a team that has a really good player in James Harden, but it feels like team-wide they took a step back. Obviously, they lost some pieces, you know, and Trevor Ariza and some core guys. But overall, I mean, a lot of the guys just aren't playing well. I mean, Eric Gordon, shoot, you know, he's been banged up, but you know, 32% when he was playing, Chris Paul under 40%. Uh, I mean, P.J. Tucker's been probably the one bright spot. As you mentioned, some of the role players, Mello. Uh, <laughs> um, th- this is a team that just took a major step back. I think we can use that cor- that sound that Corey just made as like, you know, a, a <laughs> gift and meme for many years to come because write that timestamp down, Nicholas, because uh, I'm a big fan of it. Nice job, Corey. Uh, it's almost like uh, Corey's version of the Kawhi laugh. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there we go. <laughs> but um, I think if I just like had to say one thing about the Rockets, they're just like playing lazy. Like you watch them play, it's like they're just like trying to do easy things. They don't try to play hard, except like you said, Jack, against the Nets, they kind of turned it up. But other than that, they really haven't put much effort into the game. So it's been a disappointing start. Number 10, San Antonio Spurs. Uh, the Spurs have been nice. DeMar Rosen and LaMarcus Aldridge. Uh, DeMar Rosen, uh, when you put the ball in his hands, he makes plays, man. Um, I think that he fits perfectly. I think he almost fits better in San Antonio than he ever did in Toronto. I'm not sure if that's a hot take of sorts or, or not, but um, I think that Bryn Forbes has had a really nice season um, as well. I think that when you have uh, the best coach of all time uh, for your team, you're always going to be around the mark of a top 10 team. And I think the Spurs have exceeded expectations, especially with that DeJounte Murray injury as well. Um, they're just playing some awesome basketball. I think their defense defense uh, has some work to do, but um, I'm surprised at how well they have done at this early point. But um, I wouldn't be surprised if they dropped due to form or injuries or whatever. But for me, that this is a playoff um, basketball team, and I'm pretty sure I had them in the preseason. And if I didn't, uh, then I, I was wrong. Yeah, I, I always go by the I'm never going to count out the Spurs to being tough yeah. and competitive. Uh, I didn't think they were going to be this good. Um, they're they're better than I expected simply because uh, the Jonte Murray got hurt and I didn't see who was going to be the playmaker for this team. I didn't think Patty Mills could do it. And, you know, it hasn't been Patty Mills. It's been DeMar DeRozan. Uh, he's fit right in. He's been the leader for them. The amount of mid-range jumpers they shoot between him and Aldridge, it doesn't matter. Uh, they're just a solid team. Rudy Gay took a step forward. And they, you know, it's Coach Popovich. This, this team is going to be tough, and that's what they've been so far. Yeah, they definitely enjoyed the Spurs. And like you guys said, DeMar's been really impressive stepping up, and he's taken another stride, which I think some people expect to go and be coached by Popovich. Number nine, the Philadelphia 76ers. I think this might be a team that we would put a little bit lower. Yeah, I think on paper you would on, on terms of their win-loss record, but Joel Embiid has been freaking awesome. I think, he, you know, we talked about Kimba Walker as MVP contender. I think Embiid is above that as well. He's uh, scoring at will. He's rebounding at will. He's a defensive monster. But outside of him, there are, are many, many, many questions. You know, JJ Redick and, and Landry Shamet, Shamet um, are their only sort of 
knock down three-point shooters. They really suffer from lack of spacing, especially when uh, Fulton Simmons are out there, who are both having their own struggles. Um, I think that they will eventually work it out, and this isn't going to be the full... Similar to the Lakers, this isn't going to be the full version of the Sixers that we see uh, going into the playoffs, but there are issues, you know, in terms of on both sides of the floor, but um, I think that they'll work it out because this is still a very, very young team, uh, and we are at a very early point in the season, and you can't I think most of their, you know, their core is, you know, under 25 years old and they're still only going to get better. So um, with Embiid as the crux going forward, uh, he put out a nice little Instagram post for his boys with, with a picture of Simmons and Fultz um, with the hashtag family. So I think that the cohesion there, that they're buying in, it's just, they're just going to work it all out and, and get the pieces all meshing together. Yeah, this team just didn't get better. Um, Joel Embiid, he got better. Uh, he's phenomenal. He probably is the the best center in the league right now, uh, a true yeah. center in the league. It depends on where you yeah. play, Anthony Davis. Um, he just he beats you defensively. He's fantastic around the rim. Uh, watching him against the Pacers, I mean, Miles Turner isn't the the toughest of centers, anyways. Uh, but Joel Embiid really just he got everything he wanted. Uh, he's a dominant center, uh, so he really pushes this team farther up because, like you mentioned, there's not there's no three point shooters on this team. Sarjic has really underperformed, of course. He has his breakout game against the, the damn Pacers. But, um, you know, that's just what you get. And Landry Shamit, uh, Pete Tolk called it. Uh, he said this kid was was really impressive early, and he's been really impressive. Uh, he had, I think, four or five threes the other night against the Pacers. He looks good. He's exactly what they need, somebody who can run off ball and just shoot threes. Um, but there are probably a couple spots too high. Yeah, I think for what they played so far, probably a couple spots too high. And like you guys said, getting some more shooting a hub. Joel's been great. Moving on to number eight, the Portland Trailblazers. I think a team that's kind of surprised going into the season. Yeah, probably a couple spots too low. Uh, I think that the Trailblazers have been awesome. You know, we saw a, a nice piece from Nick Boylan on um, Zach Collins as a breakout player. He's been really, really nice. And uh, I think it'll be uh, a nice dilemma to have going forward about is he uh, a long-term starter for them with Yusuf Nurchich tied up for a couple of years. CJ McCollum had his early season woes, but you know that move on Dante Di- Di Vincenzo. I'm going to give Do- Dante the benefit of the doubt because I think he literally just fell. It wasn't the move from CJ that caused him to fall, uh, but that was nasty. Um, Damian Lillard, uh, I know you guys spoke at length of him in terms of at the point guard position uh, for the OTG power, player power rankings, but he has been an MVP contender as well. It seems like all these top 10 teams have that sort of MVP candidate, but he... I think outside of Stephen Curry has been probably the best point guard in the NBA. Best point guard in the NBA? Him and Kyle Lowry. I think you can roll the dice about Kyle Lowry. In terms of right now, in terms of form, I would go Curry, uh, Lillard, uh, Lillard slash Lowry. Okay. All right. I, I'm, I'm with you on that. Uh, yeah, I mean, Lillard's been tremendous. Uh, I think he's probably a dark horse MVP candidate at this point. None of us, I mean, at least I, I slept on the Blazers. I guess the, the sweep was too heavy in my mind. Um, I do think at this point, though, I'm, like, I pumped the brakes slightly. This is just a regular season. You know, they yeah. were a three seed last year. Obviously, the rankings really, the standings really close. So they jumped a couple teams off in you know, one or two wins. But uh, it is the regular season. I don't know if McCollum and Lillard can do this in the playoffs. But those two guys, you know, on a nightly basis can get it done between the two of them. Yeah, in some teams where I think we saw a game where Dame wasn't really excellent and CJ just popped off and had a big game, like you guys mentioned, against the Bucks. So I think the Blazers, like you said, Corey, going into the season, I think the sweep was fresh in a lot of people's heads. And now it's kind of like, all right, they're bouncing back. Obviously still a long season to go, but they've been impressive. Number seven, the Utah Jazz, a team that probably is disappointed to start the year. Yeah, they were one of my top three teams in the Western Conference. You, know, you could even have them second above the Houston Rockets, but they have been disappointing. They've had you know their moments from guys like Donovan Mitchell, but outside of that, they've really struggled in terms of their defensive identity. Um, I think that a, a lot of the guys around the team are mentioning these new freedom of movement. I, I hate saying it because it's just like, I don't know why. It, th- these new rules, let's just call them these new rules and these new officiating uh, sort of tendencies from the uh, from the referees aren't allowing Rudy Gobert to be as physical as he once was. But uh, I don't buy into that because I've watched, you know, the Boston Celtics play a couple of times and they're still showing um, intense physicality and being able to um, sh- increase their defensive identity as the best defensive team in the league. But um, Gobert has looked at times awesome. Um, he's a really nice pick and roll player. He's 
still not great offensively, but his uh, his bread and butter is as a defensive, you know, mastermind. And he doesn't look like the defensive player at this stage, defensive player of the year like he was last year at this stage. But um, I trust them and I trust Coach Quinn Snyder to get it together. And Joe Ingles as well, who I think um, has been lesser than what I have of him, which are quite high expectations of him. Yeah, I mean, they've underperformed. Uh, defensively, they struggled. You know, they're middle of the pack. It's not, it's not like the Utah Jazz team. Uh, the rules are tougher. Uh, Donovan Mitchell's been in and out with a couple injuries, and he just hasn't been very efficient. He, he hasn't been as impressive as some guys at OTG have thought. Uh, Joe Inglis is solid when he's on, but he's still very streaky. This is, this is a couple spots too high. They're still a good basketball team. They're going to figure it out, but um, they're just not there yet. Yes, early in the season, I think this is too high, but you know, later in the year, they can get back to a spot like this. Uh, number six, the New Orleans Pelicans, and this is a team that started really hot, and then AD got hurt, and then Alfred Payton hurt, and now they're looking not like the number six team. Yeah, they were just so hot that like some of our guys um, had them at number one, uh, but that was obviously Ooh. when they were probably the hottest team in the NBA at that point when some of our guys and gals were doing their votes. So um, for me, yeah, their they're success relies on one person. That's Anthony Davis. I think no team relies on more. Like he has said himself, Davis, um, of one, relies on one player more than these New Orleans Pelicans, you know. Uh, I think Elver Payton's absence as well has been uh, slightly underrated. And obviously with Davis in and out of the team as well, uh, that has gone under the radar. But, they, you know, you need a capable point guard because I think Drew Holiday works better when there's another bull handler out there. Um, Drew is still, you know, insane defensively, some of the work that he's done this season. Uh, and Julius Randle certainly has his name around that. A uh, sixth man of the year contender, but um, he'll earn himself some nice money next year as well. And I think Miritich has certainly cooled off after his hot early season form as well. But um, the Pelicans are probably what they are going to be. Uh, and they rely on Davis. So hopefully he can stay healthier um, for a, a larger chunk of this season. Yeah, I mean, this team was really good, obviously, to start the year. Uh, everything was clicking. Nobody got hurt. Uh, Peyton got hurt. Uh, Davis missed some time, and this team came back, and they've been just really bad. Uh, not really bad. They just aren't the same as they were at the hot start. They've taken a step back. They're probably – they might even be like five teams back yeah. um, from this ranking. Uh, so, obviously, I had them, at, I had them really high. I'm not going to say my ranking. Um, <laughs> so, so, but they're, they're, they're coming back down to earth. I think they have a chance to get back up here. Um, I had them at three, by the way. Uh, but yeah, not I had a feeling time. that was it actually. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, you guys are pretty spot on what's happened. It's, I mean, they look like number three when we did the rankings and they were hot and then injuries hit and now they're just out of rhythm. But on to number five, Boston Celtics, who, like we mentioned before, came off a nice win in Phoenix yesterday. Yeah, nice win because uh, I, they pulled the rabbit out of the hat there. That final play um, in the fourth quarter as well. I mean, it's what you sort of expect from Brad Stevens putting the ball in Marcus Morris's hands, who has been their best three point shooter this season percentage-wise as well. But um, they still aren't even close to scraping their potential right now. You know, Hayward's still working his way back into form. Kyrie Irving's finally um, finding his feet again. Jason Tatum has had a down season by his own very, very lofty standards, has turned into a uh, a very um, washed version of Kobe Bryant in terms of the mid-range. I'm, I'm sick of seeing Jason Tatum take mid-range jumpers when he was one of the best three-point shooters last season. Um, but... You know, that's what happens when you spend time with Kobe in the offseason. Uh, Jalen Brown and Terry Rozier, their fits in terms of within this system. You know, the, the rumors are swirling about where will Terry Rozier land. I don't see him on the Boston side. I think many people, rightly so, don't see him on the Celtics long term, especially when you have Marcus Smart there uh, tied up to some long term money. So um, I think that we can see this Boston Celtics team take some jumps. I think that number five, number six is like their floor. But their ceiling is like two or three. I, I agree with the um, the floor being five six, ceiling being as high as two three. And that's just a that's like a uh, an embarrassment of riches to just go. Yeah, at our worst, we're like one of the five best teams right. in the NBA. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, they're so deep. They're just trying to figure that all out. Obviously, the the report came out that Terry Rozier may not be happy. Um, he said that's not true, um, which isn't a big deal. I don't think. They're, they're a good basketball team. Kyrie Irving is starting to really catch on. Um, you know, Tatum has been a little streaky, but th this is a team that's very deep. And once Brad Stevens and everybody can figure out the rotations, Hayward gets a little bit healthier. This is going to be a top team in, in the uh, NBA, no doubt.
Yeah, you guys pretty much nailed it. They're not, you know, anywhere close to what they will be by the end of the season, but still, like Jack said, still a top five team, even not at their best. Number four, Denver Nuggets, you know, very impressive. Nicole Jokic, Gary Harris Jr., Jamal Murray just had a big game. Thoughts on them at number four and really, you know, surprising a lot of people in the NBA. Yeah, the second best Western Conference team right now. Um, Hopefully, uh, by the time we say that, that's not the case because the Brooklyn Nets get a win over them, but... Um, that would be an upset, but I think Nicole Speaking Jokic... Speaking of two assistants, Jack. Uh, We've got to do it. We've got to do it. I did it with the comment and Anthony thing, so let's do it um, for our nest for once. Um, that was a Friday, Jamal, too. That was, so let's see if um, Lightning can strike twice. Um, but Jamal Murray's had an awesome season. He's been... Uh, I think he is like similar to a lot of these young players. He's just still finding his feet. But that 48-point performance, you know, with the... Um, it was just awesome, uh, despite what, you know, many were saying about his, you know, late game antics. Uh, Nicole Jokic has been streaky. Uh, I think streaky in terms of the fact that um, not that he's taken a heap of shots, but he took one shot against the Memphis Grizzlies the other night. And for me, when you are the team's best player, you know, you'd rather see 0 for 20 than 0 for 1 from the field. Um, he impacts the game in plenty of other ways, but um, you can't have that from your franchise player going forward. But I think Jokic is still fi- he's finding his footing as within this, like, just as the star guy, an absolute stud. I don't think he has that confidence in himself yet. And I hope he doesn't have his breakout game, you know, his bounce-back game against my Nets. I hope he saves that um, for a couple of nights into the future. But um, he has been streaky, despite the fact he's still probably a top-five center quite easily. Um, he's a passing uh, wizard in terms of the way that he can just find guys in the pick-and-roll and, and, and others. But this Denver Nuggets team is, like we were talking about with Boston, they're super stacked, you know. They've still got Will Barton to come back and Isaiah Thomas. Uh, whether they, you know, integrate Thomas as much as they'd like remains to be seen. But, you know, this is a, a really deep team and they've got a lot of talent. And I think that they're going to hover around. Uh, they should get themselves a, a home court advantage come the playoffs uh, in in April. Yeah, this is a good basketball team, obviously. Uh, one of the surprises, you know, 9-2. and two, And it's not even the offense that's been getting it done. It's the defense. They're, they're playing on the side of the ball. They haven't played in the future. You know, the other night against the Grizzlies, they, they just are bad. You know, Paul Millsap and uh, Jokic, right? Jokic, Jokic. Jokic. I, they're never going to be able to get that. Never. My <laughs> mouth doesn't do that. I can't <laughs> make that sound. Um, they had six points combined. Uh, and then, you know, no one showed up uh, last night against the Grizzlies or the other night. Um, but they're a good offensive team. Uh, I just have to utilize – Jokic as best as they can. <laughs> that was cool, Joker. Cool, Joker. Think, think <laughs> about the laugh. Like, Jok and then itch. Jokic. There. You got a That's Jokic. The there we go. That's two times. <laughs> um. So, yeah, I, in one shot in a game is unacceptable. I think they'll do better in the future. Uh, but this is, I've said, nine, nine and two. This is a good team. Yeah, I'm glad I, like, uh, really bought into the Nuggets. Yeah, you were right. You were on the money there, partner. (laughs) Yeah, I was like, yeah, I'm going to really invest in them. And they came through and they, like, making me look good. Hopefully they can keep it up. So I'm happy with the Nuggets at number four. You know, I think number three, we got Milwaukee Bucks. We'll do the top three all together. Number three, Milwaukee Bucks. Number two, Toronto Raptors. And we don't need to discuss the Warriors at number one, I don't think. Well, no, obviously they did lose to the Bucs last night. Seth Curry did. Well, the Bucs are one then, right? That's how this works. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the Bucks that's also that's how that works. No. <laughs> oh, the Bucs beat the Raptors. Come on. Uh, that's, I had, what, like Nick was buying into the Denver Nuggets, I bought like heavily into this Milwaukee Bucks team. I had them third uh, in the preseason. Maybe that wasn't enough uh, because them and the Raptors have been just awesome. This Eastern Conference is starting to become, for me, more entertaining than the West. You know, Giannis is... Still not even close to being his fully formed best, but he is just doing some insane things. Mike Budenhoser is one of the gets of the offseason. You know, if you're talking players or coaches, he's just had such a a heavy impact. Um, And the Raptors, Kyle Lowry is playing out of his mind. Um, And and, all of their ancillary ancillary players like Serge Ibaka, Fred Van Vliet, uh, Jonas Valanciunas off the bench. And then obviously, you know, they've got an MVP contender in Kawhi Leonard as well, just waiting in the wings who has barely played, you know, half the season. So uh, I think it's all all things going well. These Raptors and Bucks teams still aren't even close to hitting their stride. Uh, neither are the Warriors. As a lot of these top five teams, it's um, going to be a fun season to see how this all plays out and how we see these uh, these teams move up and down in the rankings. Yeah, I mean, I had the Bucks as a dark horse to be in the Eastern Conference Finals. 
Uh, I didn't expect this team to hit the ground running. I didn't expect the system to be working so well with the how they've been able to space the floor and give it onto the Kumbo all this room to operate. Brooke Lopez was the absolute perfect center to play alongside onto the Kumbo um, the other night. You know, they show what they can be. Obviously, the Warriors didn't even have Draymond, um, but they played a really good game of basketball against the Warriors, which is the best team in this league. Um, so the Bucks have been impressive. The Raptors undefeated when Kawhi Leonard is there. Never lost. Undefeated. Um, <laughs> <laughs> shout out to LeVar Ball. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I, I think this is fair. Um, the Bucks and Raptors, this is something that could flip in the future. Yeah, I, I mean, I've really enjoyed both teams. Like you guys said, the Bucks and Raptors have been impressive and just a lot of different pieces working on in that team. And obviously Kawhi's not 100% yet. And then obviously Antetokounmpo is going to take other strides this season. And like I said, Warriors are number one. No issue, obviously, there from anybody. Any last thoughts before we get out of here, guys? Um, obviously, make sure you subscribe on iTunes. I'm going to steal some of Nick's lines. You know, check <laughs> us out on YouTube and all the content at OGDBasketball.com because it has been a fire. And there aren't many websites right now that are producing the amount of content and quality content, be it podcasts or article, uh, than OTG is right now. Well, thank you, Jack. And what I'll do in return of the favor is make sure you subscribe and uh, check out Jack's pod, JBT, and Brooklyn Buzz. And also check out Corey's pod, Full Access Hoops, as well. Check us all out on Twitter. And you can find the brand at OTG Basketball and OTGBasketball.com. Great show, guys. And I appreciate everybody for listening.